it's on chewing gum because, uh, well, one, technically it's not criminal damage. Two, it's a space which isn't under the jurisdiction of local or national go uh, government because uh, the gum is owned by the person who spat it out. Three, hopefully it's taking a negative and changing it into a positive. The more that people can do th be creative in their env environment, that's what's in uh, I I important for me. Um, it's a celebration, hopefully what I do, of creative thinking you know, in one's environment. I'm interested how people perceive things is determined by their own internal mapping, how, and, um, and the more that we can, people realize the power of the pictures they have in their head, which will determine what they do and what they, and how they see things. And the problem is whether advertisers and the way kind of society can manipulate people through advertising and the way that they're conditioned. It's important, you know, that um, people value themselves and, and value their environment. Things aren't being cared for in the way that they were uh, cared for before, you know, like, uh, um, so the roads I find just around the area where I live, they're not, um, there's a lot more rubbish being produced. So I'm trying, I'm working with rubbish and working with the chewing gum which is discarded because I'm trying to kind of embrace the very thing that people have rejected and they've just spat it out. So I'm taking that and then utilising it in a constructive way. Because there's always, uh, you know, so that's a celebration of creative thinking, allowing, finding different ways of making things happening. So I've found a way to make art happen in a spontaneous way because you, you know, need, you need to have spontaneous interaction with your environment because it's our environment at the end of the day. A kind of a sense of, you know, it, I'm th we're talking about the caring and nurturing uh, of, of things. So I do a garden, I love gardening and I care for, for the pictures, I care for the I, I've always gardened since I was a kid, so I've always done art and I've always gardened. That, that those two things have, have gone hand in hand. So it's um, so I create the pictures, but then I look after them, you know. So and that's all part of it. And then I find I'm sweeping up all the sections of the pavement all the time and weeding whole areas because it's not being done. Because the nature of the organisations that now kind of you know that are responsible for you know it's big again big companies they don't they don't care because I know the pavements intricate you know intricately I know I've laid on every single inch of the Millennium Bridge I know it you know I know the people I know the people that can work, walk through it and I care I've cleaned off everything you can imagine you know up, off the bridge and uh, around Muswell Hill and North London, broken glass, all sort you know, sick, you name it. I've I've I've, I've dealt with it because I can because I can care. People are more likely to now in the street fall over me because they're on their mobile phone and they're totally unaware of what, like the area in which they're kind of like walking through. Often people come up, come up to me, and they just quickly, straight away, and they go, click, click, photograph, and then they're off. And they're not really, they don't even know what they're photographing. You're open to, to, what, to, to what's around you. So I, I allow the work to evolve out of the environment, rather than imposing the idea on, on the environment. And that advertising manipulates people uh, it's all about you know can mind control and it has a very fixed agenda so if you can make something which connects with the pictures in people's heads then you're doing something which is unique to for them you know I'm thinking about them I'm caring about them but it, hopefully it's not like intrusive so I'm always really happy when people say oh is that are these pictures and you know like uh, how long have you been doing this for? And then I've been working, say, in North London for 14 years, and then, well, around London and just generally 
you know uh, and people still don't oh I've never seen the pictures on the Millennium Bridge and then I've been working now there you know with the current trail kind of like for, for solidly for six years and there was a trail before that before that one got destroyed so uh, and I think well that's really good it shows uh, that hopefully it doesn't it it's not having it's not not a dominating thing it's something that you can walk by and not see or by or if you're looking then 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 you can see so it's all again it shows you uh, what the work particularly on the millennium bridge has shown me the chewing gum art is that um the work what people see of the work is determined by their perception is whether they have the faith to look when I ask people how many pictures on the bridge, I don't know, there may be about 600, maybe more, you know, I've lost, lost, lost track, but there's a lot. People will say 10 or, you know, 3 or 5 or, or they may even say they're all gone. And I say, no, they're not gone. And so you realise it's about perception, you know, how you perceive things. You know, people say, oh, no, I know nothing or, or, or I can't do it. I say, well, you're, you're an artist, by the way we're all creating pictures it's only your perception it's your reality and that determines you know what how you perceive the world and how you interact with it so it's very important pictures are important things because you just want the hassle hassle and you know the the bustle and the um you know like i remember kind of big markets where you had you know all sorts of people selling their things and i mean you get that in car boot sales think to a certain extent but it's that kind of sense sense of uh, I mean that's what um, why I like doing the pictures because the pictures then on the street they there's something that a person can discover and it's saying that hit different wells exist you know if you look there's this suddenly this whole world you know and that's interesting you say oh have you done you know, when I say it's interesting for me, the more and more I work, I'm thinking, well, I see how what people are projecting onto me. So they may think, you know, I've fallen over, and they may think I'd have, you know, yeah, a cardiac arrest or something. So I've had lots of ambulances turning up. So it was all those people thinking, oh dear, he's fallen over. Well, if they'd gone up, they would have found out that, that I hadn't. But so I've had loads of ambulances over the years. I've had loads of police, and obviously they were projecting, obviously, you know, a negative picture, and uh, and they they were wrong. <laughs> I mean, in a sense that obviously, you know, like it, you know, the work is done in a kind of caring way, and it wasn't, and and that's that's a problem where in one sense you have big corporates which are protected by law uh, I've found a way to work um, you know outside of the law but te okay, technically in one sense I'm working within the law because the work uh, if I paint on a chewing gum it's like finding no man's land or common ground it's a space which is un not under the jurisdiction of a local or national government when I do sculptures in woodland environments, I'd clear my mind and allow the work to evolve out of the place. So, uh, and it's this amazing place, you're kind of a woodland area and you have a sense of responsibility that what you do doesn't have a destructive impact and you have to think of what you do. So if you say construct or work with wood and you start adding nails, then what does that nail do? What impact does it have on the material? You know, if you carve something, it's different to constructing. And if you do introduce a come now, when I did construct, I'd like, after so many years, I'd dismantle the, the sculptures, take the nails out and put the wood back into the undergrowth where it came from. Uh, so, so in a sense, but you allow the work to kind of, uh, you have to think of the implications of what you do and what impact it has. So if you make something in one place, it may be a really beautiful kind of like clearing and it has a real silence and stillness and kind of an atmosphere about it. And if then if you think you make something, then the hundreds of people go in there, it will destroy the area because it will erode away. So you'll be responsible for destroying that place. So if people create, you know, mass produced products on a huge kind of like scale, they've got to think of the implications of what that means. 
and the people that kind of invented plastic and then produced lots of packaging now have to take responsibility for the fact that our bloody oceans are full of bloody plastic and it's destroying all the wildlife in them. And then, but the, the beautiful of the things, so advertising, they, they put pictures in people's heads. I'm saying, uh, be aware of your pictures, be aware of the illusion of them, but also kind of like, like realize that, that, that the strength of them and, and, and like what reality they have, you know, for you and the people that are, are around you. And then often the important thing about pictures or ideas in your head, clear your mind and then allow things to kind of come come to you so if i work into place in an environment the picture can be determined by many things it can be determined by someone who's upset then i immediately re respond to them straight away and i'll do something for them because i'm caring about that person at that moment in their life or if I'm if I see something that's either a bird that's died, I may draw a picture of that bird. Or rubbish in the street, I'll draw a picture of that rubbish, you know. Or and then I'll clear the rubbish, you know. So I'm always thinking, you know, like so. Pictures are important things because they kind of they give you uh, um, an impression of, of the world in, in which you're a part of, and and then. And then, so when I do kind of work one day and then I come look at it another day, I'll see something different because I'll be projecting different things onto the things. And then I kind of learn, you know, kind of in terms of reputation, representation, you know, what's going on in, in, in the work that I'm kind of creating. We're all surrounded by pictures and we're all creating pictures, but the most important pictures are the pictures uh, which are in, in our, our mind. Mm -hmm.